Hello everyone, welcome back to Unrest. Let's continue with the life of Bogwan. Alright, we need to hand out bread to the people of the slums. Although it seems like I don't, I don't have very much bread though, because I looked at my inventory and I only have three pieces. And as it says, this bread is of lower quality than what you feed your, tr your children, but it will sustain life. So it's not even very good bread. I'm just here to make sure my men don't try anything stupid. I couldn't care less about you. Uh, okay? Nice talking with you, Lieutenant. Okay, so how do I hand this out? Uh, I just talk to the hungry people and give them the bread? Well, it does seem there's three hungry people, and I do have three pieces of bread, so I suppose that's what I do. Help, please give us bread. We're so hungry. Of course, here you go. More, we need more, please. Um, well, there's three of them, and I have three pieces of bread. I don't see any harm in giving them all of it. Something horrible is probably going to happen. Here you go. The children seize the bread and begin tearing off strips of it to eat. The bulk of the bread, they leave untouched, for now. Did I give all of it? Oh no, I've got one piece left, okay. So, who do I give the next piece to? Just any one of them? an angry man here. Oh god, so I have to choose between them? All of them? I think I have to choose between every single one of them. I guess I just gave the majority of it to the kids. Just a loaf of bread? Please. I can't find food. I can barely walk. I've never been this hungry in my life. Alright, here you go, old man. Oh, how did it get like this? How can I go on like this? Alright, that's it. That God, that is not even nearly enough bread. Not even close. The bread's all gone. I think I'm supposed to go in and get something else to do. Priest, you look like you've got family. My contacts in the Mercs have a deal going. Sixty coins, and good men will look after your house when the violence goes down. What do you say? Wait, what? My contacts in the Mercs. Mm. 60 coins, that seems like a lot of money. Well, I don't even have 60 coins, but... <laughs> uh, but, um... Given what you just said to me, even if you hadn't said that, to be honest, I don't think I would trust you, but now I especially don't trust you. It ain't much out of their way. The mercs, guards, and Jadeep will draw up a map of where defenders will go. 60 coins means your house gets added to the map. We're not already on it? Nope. Okay, well I don't have the 60 coins anyway. You're a priest. You'll find a way. Oh yeah, priests are really good at finding money. That's exactly what they do all the time, right? They train for that. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Coin for safety. Just think about it, yeah? Soon enough, you'll realize the only family you can save for sure is your own. Mm-hmm. Sure. Only a few months ago, we were carrying bread out into the slums. Now they see us carrying the bread in, and the doors are mobbed in minutes. We need a new solution. Hmm. All my responses are apparently relaxed. This works well, it reminds people where the food comes from. Uh, I don't know about that. I could, you know, mobbing the doors in minutes, I could easily turn into, like, a riot.
Perhaps we should have priests bring it straight from the kitchens? We tried that. Let's just say things came to a pass where Ranvir insisted on seeing each crateful with his own two eyes. Oh, speaking of which, Ranvir wanted to speak with you when you were finished. I think he was watching you through the doors. Okay, that sounds a bit creepy. Hi, Ranvir. I heard you were watching me. I wonder if you'd like to talk about what happened out there. Passing out bread is one of the directest philosophical challenges a new priest can face. Often it takes them a few times to grasp the principles of who should be served first. Hmm. I served the children and an old man. You know the... Like, my gut feeling would be serve the children first, which I did. And then serve the, uh, you know, like the... The special cases, like the old, uh, the sickly, you know, things like that. Which I guess is actually what I did. Okay, well you seem to know what I chose. Do you think I chose poorly? You didn't feed the man who was dying of sickness. I understand this is a point of some controversy. A co controversy. Controversy. So let me just tell you what I believe. That it is the most wretched of men who deserve the most compassion. An able man can, if need be, find a way to keep his family fed. The same cannot be said of a man who is withered and bent. Okay. Yeah, I fed an old man, but I didn't feed the sickly man. It's true. I have a task for you. It is more straightforward than choosing who gets bread and who does not. I should think. I need someone to go through the slums and distribute medicine to the sick and faithful. Prabble usually does this, but I'm afraid he's been badly injured this morning. So I need someone else to step up. Hmm. If he was injured... I mean, like it says here, surely we should wait until things are calmer. Well, the thing is, when it comes to medicine, I don't think you really can wait. At least not if you want to save people's lives. But it does sound like it could be dangerous, so uh, could I have an escort? At best, I could spare a handful of men, and in the past, I'm afraid a small party has attracted more unwanted attention than one lone priest. An escort guarantees to any uh, would-be attackers that you're carrying a prize worth winning, while lone priests go out in the slums all the time. I would just try to keep a low profile. Oh, that's true! God, you have a group of people that are desperate for anything, and they see someone who's guarded. They know they have something valuable. Yeah, it's like putting a freaking flashing beacon on your head. Alright. Will you do this? Go out into the crowd with valuables. This sounds like a little bit of a repeat with what happened with uh, Chitra at the beginning. I wonder if I'm not going to be coming back from the crowd. But, alright, I will. Take heart, Bogwan. We are Banka Mundi's soldiers. Because we do what others won't, we have his strength and his respect. Return to me when you're finished. He removes the last of six small terracotta files from a nearby rack and places them into a pouch for you. There they are. Life in Behemer's slums takes three shapes, food, medicine, and coin. This is the least important. All right, so I've got six of them. Gotcha. One of the slum guards who works with Ranvir offered to help protect my family in exchange for money. Not a small sum either, not for a priest like me. How much danger could my family be in? We're an afternoon's walk away from the slums. An afternoon's walk away from the slums? That is really far. I mean, just like a casual... <laughs> a, a casual riot is what I was going to say. A casual riot? What the fuck is that? <laughs> but, I mean, just like a... I don't know, a normal riot in the slums would not seem to put them in danger, but, I mean, if they were, like, organized and kept going for a long time, then they could get there. A casual riot. <laughs> that should be the name of a band or something. Okay. Let's go distribute the six things of medicine. He's sending you out? Bogwan, don't risk your life out there. 
If you wander around too long, those animals will tear you apart. No, listen to me. The slum market is at the western flank after you leave the temple. You'll find someone there who will buy all the medicine from you. He'll distribute it for you, and maybe you have enough uh, set by to take care of your children if the worst happens. Yeah, you want me to sell the medicine on the black market? That certainly would be safer for me. And the medicine would get to people, but the problem is, the market is going to sell it to the people, which means they're not going to be getting it for free. Which is only helping the wealthier of the already poor people, which is not good. You say that like you've done it. I have, and I don't regret it. It's where it will end up anyway, you know. I'm sorry, but it's true. Half the sick people in the slums are fakers, and half are just too desperate to let a guaranteed mouthful of bread slip through their fingers, even if their blood's on fire and their limbs are rotting. Anyway, good luck out there. Don't take any chances. <sighs> Given what happened in the very first encounter, the very first sort of situation with Chitra. I am very, very hesitant. To, what the fu- Why is there a corpse here? Okay, <sighs> hold, hold on, I'll get to that in a minute. Like I was saying, <laughs> let's finish the thought. Yeah, given what happened with Chitra, doing the noble, but dangerous thing of like going out into a crowd that may or may not like you very much, even with armed escorts, is obviously very dangerous. Which makes me really not want to do it. And perhaps just sell them on the black market. But that's incredibly selfish. Sell them on the black market so that it's guaranteed that anyone who wants a medicine is going to have to pay for it instead of getting it for free. Like, and that's going to make it so that I'm not in, in as much danger because I'm not going out there throughout the whole slums for a long time. And plus, I'm going to be able to probably have enough money from that to protect my family, from, as the lieutenant said. Whether they're actually going to protect us or not, who knows. But that is incredibly selfish. I'm a freaking priest. D you don't know. <laughs> that's not what priests are supposed to do. Like, that's just wrong. So, I'm going to overcome my hesitance to go out into the crowd, and I'm just going to go out there. So yeah, now we get to the corpse. Why is there a corpse here? It's alright, it's better this way. Guys like that would either starve to death or killed somebody for a scrap anyway. But what happened? Well? Still haven't got it. <laughs> I mean, did he just, like, pass out from sickness, or did he try to attack someone? Guys like that would have either starved to death or killed somebody for a scrap anyway. I'm guessing that means they attacked... The person attacked them? Or attacked somebody for their food, maybe? Huh. Alright. See, where am I? I'm on the temple approach, so I'm not quite in the slums yet. Yeah, I mean, these buildings are actually very nice. This is obviously not the slums. Not to mention the people hanging around here are wealthy, as their names say. Looking for donations? I suppose I can spare a little. She reaches into a purse, withdraws a few coins from the dozen within, and hands them to you. Here. Oh. Right, I guess, yeah, people would donate to us, wouldn't they? Okay, well, maybe I can just raise the coin that way. Oh, come on, I don't want to guilt trip them. Every coin you give give me feeds a child. Couldn't you spare more? I, ah, I don't want to guilt trip them. But at the same time, I might be able to get more money, but they're probably going to hate me. It's a donation. I mean, you just don't... 
You shouldn't be rude to someone who's giving you, you a donation. They don't have to. So, thank you. This may yet save a life. I'm glad to give anything I can. Well, let's talk to every merchant, then. Come for food and money? I have to say, I don't see the point. Everyone west of Shyam's line is going to starve to death someday. At least I have a chance of saving my family. I'll be a little firm here. There's no good pragmatic excuse for turning your back on people in need. How is it not? This drought shows no signs of ending soon. Between what little we've managed to grow, and what we can bring in from the Naga merchants, we don't have enough food for everyone. So why give what little food exists, exists to those who can't afford it? Okay, so this is a very practical-minded man. So... I'll play into his... his thought process a little bit, alright. If you want things to ever go back to normal, you'll need to keep the slums from rioting, which means feeding them. So it's coercion, is it? Pay them off to keep them from your door, from your doors another day. I see how it is. Never thought of it that way. Well, maybe I'll have a talk with Ranvir, see if he can recommend any ways to stay particularly well protected. Um, did, did I do something good? I convinced him of something. I don't know if it helped us. Is he going to make a big donation to Ranvir? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Hopefully nothing horrible comes of that. Let's see if I can get donations from the wealthy women. I used to admire priests, you know. Used to? What changed? What about you? I'd offer you something to eat, but I know Ranvir keeps you very well fed. Yeah, I'm fine on food. Good day. Alright, so I guess I can't get any donations from the wealthy people. Maybe the merchant. Nope. I got lucky, found someone who'd give me business. I'm not hungry anymore. Not really sure what to do with my time anymore. Bogwan, right? Making the rounds or just taking a break? Making the rounds. Just finished up my work at the temple. Hard, isn't it? Half of them see you as a savior, and half of them see you as a target. Out here, they think we're enabling a district full of crazed killers. But at least they're civil about it. Honestly, I can't say I blame them. The slums are definitely dangerous. So is an empty belly. Life is sacred. You can't... Let half the city die to make the other half feel safe. I'd rather feed a stranger who lives to break the necks of a thousand fat merchants than let them let him starve on principle alone. Well, maybe not a thousand fat merchants, maybe like a hundred? Or maybe ten if they were really, really, really fat. And please don't tell anyone I said that. Please don't tell anyone what I just said either. The part about broken-necked merchants? That's the one. Sorry, I know it's not a very nice thing to say. I'm sure you've got errands to run. I won't keep you from them any longer. Okay, two ways to exit. Down here is... Oh, well, there's a sickly man. <laughs> That's interesting. This one's marked as sick? Question mark? Naga. What does that mean? Okay, well, let's see, I have six of them, so one, two... I says distraught, not sick. One, two... Three... Four... Okay, well... There's... I, I think I might have more than I actually need. Hmm. 
right, see what's going on down here. Shopkeeper, can you spare spare some coin? No. Nope. Is it that time again? Uh, very well. I'll have my servants bring some food over to the over to the temple. Anything to keep those soldiers of J-Deep in fighting shape. Wow, so they think of them as soldiers, which is not really what they are. So they're actually expecting, like, they're, they're expecting a war, and they're expecting fights. Hmm. The slums have no soldiers. If anything, J-Deep's men are guards, protectors. Yeah, except what they're protecting is us. If things come to violence, who do you think they'll side with? The starving wretches around them, or the people who gave them bread and uniforms? Ranvir is a clever man. Who would have thought of making the slums our first line of defense against the slums? Mule tender. This person tenderizes mules. Ah, you are new. It's usual for old... Oh, is usual for old priests to change temples like this? I'm not from around here. Do not understand all of Behemoth's traditions. To be a priest in Bahimra is a lifelong calling. Wait, conf confiding. Conf do I want to confide? I'm going to be very conservative with the people out here, given that my life is in danger. I mean, I don't see what threat this person could pose, but uh, yeah, let's let's be really conservative. It's complicated. What do you want to know, anyway? You're not likely to become a priest. <laughs> that is a very rude thing to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. It seems strange. I was told Behemra was a place of many gods, many temples, but all of it serves one wisdom. And then I come here and it seems Banka Mundi is only god in slums. It seems Ranvir is forcing other priests to join him. I don't understand. Okay, so do I want to criticize Ranvir for his obviously not very ethical behavior? Or do I want to play the part of someone who simply keeps his head down and tries to survive? Hmm. It's a hard decision. One is certainly safer. You could say the other is more virtuous. But, I do have children to think about. I'm gonna keep my head down. I don't really know what he is and isn't forcing people to do. I'm just taking the opportunities I'm given. Anyway, I just carry boxes. Good luck with the hard work today. Thank you. You too. Good luck tenderizing mules. Wandering priest. What, are you lost? Ah, you're one of Ranvir's, aren't you? Rare to see one of you all the way out here. We go where we're needed. Where crates need lifting and goods need handing out, you mean? Please don't be offended. I am sometimes confused why Ranvir has seemingly every one of his priests doing menial chores. Why doesn't he just hire suitable men from the slums? Hmm. It's actually an interesting question. There's no reason a priest has to be handing out medicine. I mean, anyone could do that.
It's true, though, he doesn't want to divide the slums, so it would make sense that if he hired some of the people from the slums to hand out the medicine... ...and food and whatnot, that... man, that'd be... that'd be messy on multiple levels. For one, you are... you know, you're, you're paying certain people and not others, which would create jealousy. And also, if you're hiring from the slums, those people from the slums are probably gonna have friends, maybe family. So how much can you trust them to... ...to hand out the food and the medicine without, you know, without a bias or without favoritism? Hiring some and not others would divide the slums. That's his worst fear. I respect how hard you all work, and I wish you good fortune in keeping the slums peaceful. I just hope bread crusts aren't the only tools that Ranvir has. But I'm sure you all know what you're on about. <laughs> what you're on about. Let's try that again. But I'm sure you all know what you're about. Please, don't let me sit here and talk your ear off if you've got work you should be doing. Do you have monies, wealthy woman? Damn it. You know, I have to ask, what is it you people have against Naga? Okay, I'm gonna be a bit critical of the Naga hate. I don't have anything against them. You realize how lucrative trade with the Naga is for us? Half of the decent food that comes into the city is through our connections with the Empire. I mean, I don't like the creepy bastards. Who does? But having a Naga counselor has been the best thing for Behemra in a long time. I don't disagree. You tell Ranvir next time you see him. Coming from a real man of wealth and intelligence, the Naga, the Naga are more useful to us than a hundred human slum rats. Okay, he sounds like a lovely person. But, uh, he is right. He is definitely right. Alright, there should... Hold on, it says there's a sickly man here. Is that the sickly man? His name is Slum Dweller instead of Sickly Man, though, which is strange. But that is where he'd be on the... You know, where he's on the map is, like, right here. Let's see. I think this is him. Hey, hey, priest. Don't harm your brothers. Don't take from your brothers. And what's the last one? Protect your street. Can I get some medicine? Hmm. Okay, well, first, are you actually sick? Cause, I mean... Yeah, let's establish that he's actually sick before I get him medicine. Don't I look sick? Because let me tell you, I feel like my guts are rotting from the inside. I don't believe you. He, honestly, he doesn't look sick. Um... Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not sure if I can help you now, but maybe later. Uh, maybe I should just give it to him. He could try to attack me or something, you know? Then again, the guards are right up here, right? Okay, I'm not sure if I can help you now, but maybe later. Kieran. You work to give out bread and medicine, but only to your people. I live to give education and training, but only to my people. If we can extend that segregation to all matters, I think we might almost be happy. I'm going to make the case for cooperation. I disagree. I think cooperation would be a higher ideal. Frankly, I don't think we really want to cooperate with humans at this point. You've pushed the refugees into a game where your food is what you take, and your squat is what you can keep. 
and while I don't know why you've chosen that game, it's a game we can win. So now when I hear a human talking of cooperation and sharing, I think this is a chance to redefine the terms of our mutual survival in a way you find favorable. So, yeah, what is this about? Is this about survival? Or not? I'm going to choose one of these two options. I'm not sure which one. How long do you think you can compete directly for resources like that? Don't you know this is bound for violence? Of course it is. Listen, I know you're speaking from a place of principle. But as someone who has been long subject to the slums version of humanity, I can promise these principles are irrelevant to reality. We only have the option of responding to how we are treated, and if we choose anything but the hardest and toughest response, we will perish. Thus far, we have chosen not to perish. If conflict emerges, then we will continue to choose that option. And this is what it means to be a Naga in the slums. Well, I have little doubt that they're much more powerful than humans when it comes to fighting. I'd actually like to know the population breakdown, just how much Naga are there. Could they completely wipe out the humans in the slums? If it came to that? One must wonder. Okay, are you the sick Naga? Hey, human, you want to give me some of that? Or is that too only for your kind? Is that something else my people are going to have to steal if they want to survive? <sighs> Ranvir, if he, if Ranvir gets word that I'm handing medicine to the Naga. Yeah, he's not going to be too happy. I'm going to do it anyway, though. Just on principle alone, but we'll see what happens. If you need it, I'll give it to you. Just say the word. One good human, huh? Keep the medicine. Keep the medicine, and the money, and the power. We'll take it all soon enough, just you wait. Things can't go on like this much longer. Oh god, that's not good. <laughs> that is not a good thing to hear. Slum Ganger. Hey, hey you, priest. What are you doing down here? Mm, I'm gonna be careful. Yeah, no. Nothing. No, nothing at all. That sounds... that's not a very convincing lie. I'm certainly not going to tell him that I'm passing out medicine, but at the same time, that is a shitty lie. It's like, <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. I'm just going to go away now. Don't, don't follow me. And as I walk away, like all the bottles of medicine in my pocket jangle together. Compassionate. I don't think I want to be compassionate to a slum ganger. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. Oh, okay. Whatever, just keep just keep going. Don't hang around or you'll get jumped by somebody. Wow, you are easy to convince. Alright, thanks for the warning. Distraught man. Oh, that's the uh, that's the man I talked to before when I was playing as Asha, right? The one who had basically given up. Don't kill. Steal. Protect. Something. Kill Naga. Please, my sister is badly ill. I just need one dose. How long has she been sick? Days. A week? 
Please, she's the only thing I have left anymore. Should I pry a little bit further? A little bit further. How, uh, do I want to say how did you lose your fan? No, let... T here. Thank you, priest. Ranvir is a great man. I wouldn't believe... Uh, I wouldn't be alive without him. And now he saved my sister as well. Whoa, hey, hey, new priest, listen. My people own the streets to the west. Go there and you'll be killed for sure. Uh, seriously? Oh, shit, look at this. Whoa, I didn't see those before. There's way, way, way more people than I thought. Pox-ridden man. Ugh. Philosopher! If I remember right, when I talked to you as Asha, you were a complete douchebag. What? Have I done something wrong? No, I just wanted to talk to you. Can't. Don't want rumors getting around that I'm working with you people. What do you mean, you people? Racist. Why would Anaga work for Ranvir? Can't talk. Please go. Okay, fair enough. I knew someone would come. The woman coughs up blood. Oh, God. Okay, well, yeah, you don't even need to convince me. You're sick if you're coughing up blood. I need some medicine. Please. I can't keep the tenets straight. But I swear I'll make it up to your temple if I can survive just a little longer. I'm not gonna freaking interrogate her. She's coughing up blood. Here you go. Yeah, have medicine. She looks at you, bleary-eyed, and nods. Okay, so I have four left? Yeah, four left. Talk to the douchebag. Oh, a new priest of Ranvir's order. And I suppose you're going to tell me you've reached a deep understanding of Banka Mundi's teachings in the days you've been here? You seem contentious. Is something troubling you? Contentious? Look, he's such a fucking dick. You say anything to him and he's like, I hate you. Look, he has the, literally, he has the lowest respect he can possibly have for me. This philosopher is the most contemptuous little fuckstick of a man ever. Contentious? No, I'm alert. I was a priest once, and to think of how I was, how I was then sickens me. Take this. If you swallow it half as quickly as you've swallowed the teachings of your other masters, you'll soon come to grasp how foolish you've been. Wait, what the hell did you just give me? It's a pamphlet. Complacency is the weapon of evil. Priests are men, and men commit evil for their own ends. Do not trust safe and easy answers. Guard your heart as carefully as you would guard your own life, and the world will be better for your caution. Do not believe Ranvir's stories. Do not believe your terror. Believe in what your own eyes tell you. Eyes! Okay. So he's, uh, this Naga said that I'm gonna die if I go to the west. <laughs> so, <laughs> needless to say, I'm a little bit cautious. But look at, look at all that. Look at all those sick people. I mean, I don't know if the Naga meant, like, just if I move one over to the west, or maybe it's like really, really far to the west, is where the Naga control the streets. So maybe I'm okay to move over one? I don't know. I'm gonna do it. Here we go. Okay. No, it seems fine. I don't even see any Naga. Oh, is it at the Black Market? Is where the Naga are? Because that's further to the west. Hmm. Alright, well, I'm safe here. At least from the Naga, I am. a sick child here. As you approach, the boy lets out a hacking cough. Please, I know the teachings. Can I have some medicine? I've been sick for so long.
Hmm. It sounds like he let out a hacking cough just as soon as he saw me. Which, uh... Honestly, is a little bit suspicious. If you wanted to be less suspicious, kid, you should have timed your cough differently. Hmm. Didn't I see you at the bread lines earlier? Yes, I was getting bread with the others. You gave us food. Not like all those other mean priests and priestesses who won't give us anything, no matter how much we beg. You'll take care of me, right? Okay, well, I should hand out to the medicine to the most needy first. Like, if someone's hacking up blood like that woman was, they need the medicine much more than someone who has a bit of a cough. So... Alright, listen. I'll pass out what I've got, and if I've got any left, I'll come back for you. Fair enough? I'll be here. Don't forget. Persistent woman. And malnourished man. Malnourished? Well, I don't have any food. I don't think I can do anything about that. What? You think I need medicine, don't you? I try to take an interest in the needs of everyone around me, med medicinal or otherwise. What you see is no disease. No illness festers within me. Only a being far, far greater than you can comprehend. I am an ancient being that is neither Naga nor human, but a terrible mixture of both. So you see, I need no medicine. I need only a fresher host to transfer myself into. This body is broken and worthless. I will not need it much longer. What the fuck? Dude, did you come from outer space? A fresher host to transfer myself into. Uh, why do I have a feeling someone might find this man, like, cutting open the body of someone and trying to crawl inside their guts? Um... Alright, well, if there's anything I can do to make you comfortable, at least let me know. Just leave me be. I have control over my own future. I don't need you. I don't need anyone. Okay. There's always something shady going on in this alley back here. It was with, uh, when I was playing as Asha, and now it is here, too. So if you didn't bash the priest, which one of you alley dogs did? Let's keep listening. They're from outside. They come in, they cause trouble, and they leave. I don't even know what they want. Well, you see them again, you let us know, yeah? Ranvir isn't happy about this. Alright, alright. You were more fun when you were skimming us medicine. It was fun, while it lasted. Now, we're both on our own. Wait a minute, so where's the persistent woman? I mean, the only woman I've seen here is, is her, and I can't even talk to her. Is it you? No. Oh, it's gotta be up here. Yeah, there we go. Someone cleaned away the body. Hey, 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 where are you going? Don't steal from or kill your brothers and keep them safe. That's it, right? Come on. I got a sick family to take care of. God, when I question them, I feel like I'm being such a dick. Let's uh, probe a little bit in. Alright. 
The tenants came very quickly to you. What else am I going to do with my time? My parents and husband are crippled with disease. There's no food to be had anywhere. Nothing to do but fight hunger pains, attend speeches, whenever Ranvir can find the time to give one, and hope for a priest to come by. No, I need to be more careful. I need to give it to the people that are, like, blatantly, obviously, horribly sick first, and then I can distribute it to the other people if need be. The most needy first. Perhaps later. Malnourished man. I don't think... Uh, hey, look. I know the teachings and everything, but let me be honest. I'm not sick. Nobody in my family is sick. We're all just starving. Can I just get some medicine to trade? Wow, I really appreciate that honesty. But again, the most needy first, and then I'll see what I have left. So, perhaps later. Beggar. No. Be grieved, father. Leave me, please. There's nothing you can do. Wait, did I talk to you? Hmm. <laughs> Naga liked to strike out from doorways. Sss, watch out! Okay, so let's not keep going west, because that's apparently where the Naga are. Let's go down. Catatonic, man. I have to say, that is a really bad superpower. I am Catatonic Man, and I'm... Unconscious. Hmm, there's a Naga here. Alright, so a lot of people here too. Hmm. Please, priest. I'm so tired these days, I can barely move. I need medicine. The tenants are not to steal or kill and to protect your brothers, right? Isn't that all we need to know? Uh, perhaps later. I need to get the worst first. Um, hi. Oh, you're talking to me. Oh, that's just wonderful. Humans really are such wonderful people. Resource efficient, hardworking, honest, caring. And you know, I don't get the chance to apologize often enough for all the terrible diseases the Naga refugees brought with them. It hardly seems fair, particularly since we don't seem to have gotten infected with anything in return. I'm sorry, perhaps I'm carrying something. Maybe you should keep back. Okay, I, I read that incredibly sarcastically because, like, that just seems incredibly sarcastic. That's gotta be sarcasm, right? But, if you look up here, it looks like he's... Is this the adoring fan from Oblivion? Like, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, right? You really adore me? I I'm revered to you? Are you serious? Yeah, uh, I'm sure we've inflicted our share of troubles on you. No, that's not reasonable at all. Our refugees came over to your slums unwanted and unasked for, permitted only because your royal family was blackmailed by the threat of revoked trade offers. So the city's elite got foodstuffs and supplies, which we should have traded them anyway. And what does the slum dweller get? Disease, predators, and death. They should have left my people out in the dust to rot. That is very sad. Sounds like this person... Well, I guess not a person. This Naga has so internalized the bigotry that they hate themselves? That is... disturbing.
What I mean is, you don't need to sympathize with us. The Naga struggle to survive, just as we do. Any Naga who cannot sympathize is a greedy fool. What right do we really have to take food from the mouths of your babes? What right do we have to come to your city and ruin your lives? Not all of us disapprove of the work Ranvir is doing. Myself? I think it is not only his right, but his duty. That is very strange. You have medicine? Please. I can't remember the tenets. Nobody will tell me what they are because they all want the medicine for themselves. But this cough killed my cousin yesterday, and I'm not ready to die. Alright, perhaps later. I'm looking for more people that are coughing up blood. Okay, you're the man I was going to give medicine to as Asha, but I couldn't because the game forced me to... Like, it, it just forced the day to end before I even had a chance to. I wonder if I'd actually given the medicine to him as Asha if he, he wouldn't be sick now. This man is slim, slicked with fever sweat and burbling incoherently. Foam has gather, gathered at the corner of his mouth, and a fine dribble of blood runs from his nostril. Oh my god! His clothes are wrinkled from where he's been clutching them, but now his arms hang limp, limp like the rest of him. Holy shit. Look, there isn't even anything in the bars. Because he's not even... He's not even, like, conscious. Fuck, the question is, is he too far gone? Alright, I'm gonna force medicine down his throat. I, don't even bother talking to him, there's no point. Take it. With some difficulty, you force the medicine past his dry and swollen tongue. You withdraw a finger slicked with strange and unpleasant moisture. Ew. Uh, I'm not gonna get sick myself, am I? The man's condition seems no better or worse right now. Okay. Okay, that leaves me with what, three? Yeah, three. Oh, here we go, Catatonic Man. Please. The figure grasps weakly for aid, but can barely speak. Okay, yeah, you definitely need it too. Here we go. He nods weakly and smiles. Okay, so that leaves me with two. Still the pox-ridden man, which I'm almost certain is going to need medicine. Hold on, can I go talk to you back here? Actually, I can't get back here, can I? Nope. Okay. Now, who's this Harish? Uh, I don't suppose you show up under people, do you? Nope. Oh, thank all the gods, a priest. Please, my boy needs... Oh, Harish! That's why he seemed familiar! <laughs> that's... Oh, that's so cool! That's the man um, back at the uh, the farming village when I was playing as Tanya. That's the man I sent to the city to get medicine. Yeah! Oh, that is so cool. Please, my boy needs medicine. He's covered in sores and he's got a terrible fever. And I don't know what I could have done if I hadn't found you. Okay, well, I, there's no need to even question this person. I know he's... I know his family is actually sick. His boy is sick. There's no doubt about that. Wait, I'm very sorry to have to tell you this, but this medicine doesn't cure fevers. Wait, are you serious? Is that true? Well, I mean, the fever itself is not the sickness. It's just a result of the sickness, so what do you mean? I'm, un I'm unsure. Like, is there any point in giving it to him? Is he... Is it just not going to work? I no, fuck, I I'm gonna give it to him. Bless you, priest. Bless you. Oh, my boy. We have hope again. Jesus, well, I hope it actually works. I've got one remaining, and I think it's going to have to go to the pox-ridden man. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. I'm not going down there. I think that's like a child gang that are gonna like stab my toes with butter knives or something. No, 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 I'm not going down there. Th oh shit, there's a thug. <sighs> Fuck. The man reaches suddenly behind his back and pulls out a short bladed filthy knife, which he thrusts towards your face. Shit. Put all the medicine in this bag. Put it in the bag and walk away. God damn it. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be interesting. It's too dangerous. It's too damn dangerous. I keep- no. I can't. I mean, it sounds all nice, right? The... the priest. You know, the godly priest. Talking the thug man into realizing his mistakes. That sounds nice. It's a nice little fairy tale. But in reality, when someone points a gun at your head, or a knife at your throat, or whatever, you give them your fucking wallet, or your money, or whatever the hell they want, and then you continue on living. Unfortunately, though, it's not just my own life I'm dealing with here, but I'm also dealing with the pox-ridden man who is almost certainly going to die. But I'm going to give it to him. What? Just like that. Okay, hold on, there might be some hope here. Maybe he'll feel guilty. Could I guilt trip him? Just by playing the super passive... priest? Hmm. Let's try it. I don't believe in violence. So, what? You're a coward? Not surprising. Everyone who serves Ranvir is. Alright, well, fuck. Your pouch is empty. Alright, so I've gained a trait reasonable. Bogwan would rather surrender the medicine than die for it. <sighs> well, I'm sorry, pox ridden man. Uh, you know, I probably shouldn't even talk to him because I might get sick. Like, w what's even the point? I can't help him. I don't have anything... I, I don't have anything to give him. I can give him a pamphlet. <laughs> I don't think a pamphlet is gonna cure his... problems. Okay, well, I got almost everybody who... was in extreme need of it. Uh, let's see if this sick man here is any doing any better. Nope, not yet. Okay, well so far I've managed to do my rounds without di horribly dying. Let's see if I can make it back. Okay, everything seems normal. No, I didn't forget you, sick child, but I just don't have any more. Okay. I think I'm actually okay. I'm assuming I am supposed to go back, right? Let's see. Uh, a wealthy merchant donated 16 coins and some food to the temple to keep Jadeep's men healthy and loyal. 
Oh, did he give it? He gave it to me to give to the temple? Like, this is an active quest, not completed. Which is suggesting I still need to do something? Hmm. Okay, there's the whole uh, give money to, to, uh, to protect my family thing, which I can't do because I don't have enough. I should return to Ranvir because I don't have any more medicine. Okay. Hold on. Have I talked to Jadeep? To his men. Don't kill anyone human if you can help it. Dead men won't help us, and neither will their families. Hang on. Isn't that just like a priest? I didn't mean to interrupt, you say, right after you came up to me, to interrupt. How about you bother someone else? Or better yet, do what you're supposed to and run Ranvir's errands for him. Wow, you really don't like me. I'm going to play the so nice guy that I'm... I'm probably just going to annoy him further. You seem angry. What have I done to provoke you? Angry? Believe me, priest. If you'd been where I've been, you wouldn't call this angry. You'd call it polite. <laughs> this option. It's such a priestly thing to say, isn't it? A man who fights tigers doesn't need to eat his meat raw like one. Try a calmer way of speaking. You're from these slums, aren't you? Is that why your job is important to you? You want to know why my job's important to me? If I didn't have this job, you know where I'd be? Dead. Starved or sick or gutted by Naga. But dead, like thousands of others. It was me who went to Ranvir. And it's me who represents him in the streets. It's benefited Ranvir, and it's benefited me. And maybe, just maybe, it saved another life or two. Same deal as you. Now get gone. I've got work to do. Yeah, so I've only got 28 coins, which is not nearly enough. I would have had to sell them to the, uh, sell the vials, or files, I guess, to the black market to have any chance of paying the lieutenant off. Alright, Ranveer. Were you watching me the whole time, too? Peering around corners and looking through small holes cut into the walls or something? Like the creep you are? You're back. Have you handed out as much as you could today? Well, yes I did, but I was robbed. I'm sorry to say, I was robbed. What? Twice in one day? This is... new. Please, describe the attacker as best you can. Wow, I can actually give an incorrect description. Why would you want to do that? I mean, like, why would you want to protect the man who stole the medicine from me at knife point? I don't see the motivation. I'm just going to give him a detailed description. He sounds familiar. He's an old street ganger, picked up by Kanika. A woman who used to be a royal priestess. She resents the fact that Banka Mundi's temple supplanted her own, and incorrectly blames me for the death of the king and queen. If I could only divert enough guards from the city and Jadeep's forces to root those murderers out once and for all. We've gone through most of our bread and medicine today. If we're going to have enough for a similar display next week, we're going to need to place some orders this evening. For that, we're going to need funds. You've never gone out for funds before, have you? Um, not for this temple, no. Sometimes I visited old patrons of my last temple. Getting money is never easy, but I've heard that a few potential donors have recently re-entered the city. Mandeep, a doctor, and Dar, a merchant, have both come home for a few days. We received money from them in the past. Ask them to give again. 
Oh, and while you're out, see if you, see if you can get a few bystanders to bring food or medicine to the temple. Remember, Bogwan, when you're on the job, you're always looking for ways to help the needy. Okay, well, I've already gotten all the donations from kind of the random people, but I have not talked to Mandeep or whoever the other person was. I gathered from two people in the safer, more affluent uh, parts of the city. And while I'm out, I'm going to ask any well-to-do person if they have anything to give in terms of food or medicine. Well, for any more affluent part of the city, then I guess it's probably right up here, right? Uh, oh, Mandeep, okay. I don't think I had the option to go there before, did I? Hmm, maybe I did. And there's Dar. Okay, well, I'm going to see if I can get their donations in the next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.